Uh, the question says, um, uh, the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is it allowed? He means celebrating, I'm sorry, celebrating the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is it allowed or is it something good? Some brothers say we just read the Quran while celebrating it. What is wrong with reading Quran on any occasion at any time? <coughs> what I said a few moments ago as I was uh, trying to communicate to you what bid'ah is and the definition of bid'ah and that uh, bid'ah is always, is always within the Muslim ummah, again we're talking about within the Muslim ummah, that bid'ah which does not lead to kufr, there is always an intention of good behind it, remember, unlike the ma'asiyah. There is always an intention of good and there is always justification for it. And we said that there are two types of bid'ah. For example, in one classification, bid'atun haqiqiyya wa bid'atun idhafiyya. Al-bid'atul haqiqiyya is that bid'ah which has no support, no argument to support it in general, ijmalan, min al-kitab aw min al-sunnah. Whereas al-bid'ah al-idhafiyya, the idhafi bid'ah or the relative bid'ah has support for it in the Quran or in the Sunnah in general terms but not in the specifics. That's why, of course, reading the Quran on any day is good. Performing dhikr of Allah Azza wa at any time is good. Being in dua of Allah Azza wa at any time is good. But then to specify a day and to make that day special in terms of the reward that I'm going to be bestowed on, on that day, that is what makes it a bid'ah in this case. Why? In addition to what I said, and I have not said, again, I have not given too many details, but in addition to what I said, you and I know, and people of ilm know, the students of ilm know, that Allah Azza wa Jal has specified certain days and certain times for certain ibadat. Hasn't he? Indeed. And since of the days of the, of, of the week and of the days of the year and of the times of the year that he created, he in his knowledge decided that this day and this day and this hour and that hour during them we should emphasize ibadah and he left things he left other days open and he did not say specify this day for ibadah now the question comes why since he specified certain days for ibadah and he left certain days out he intended to do that or he forgot to do that? Answer me. He intended to do that. If he forgot to do that, if you say he forgot to do that, well, billah, that's kufr. So if he intended to leave them open, for what reason? A good reason or not good enough reason? You must answer as a mu'min for a good reason. Then. The next question, what reason do I have since the reason for not having specified that day, any day, other than the days that he specified as special, since he had a good reason, will I ever had a reason that is good like that of Allah or better? The answer must be no. Therefore, he intended to leave it open by the very fact that he specified certain days to be special, number one. Number two, did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do that? No. Did the Sahaba do that? No. Did they have the same reason that would motivate me or you later to do that? Did they or not? 
What is the reason that would motivate you and me, let's say, to celebrate the birthday of our Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam? What is it? Naam? Ibadah. The love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reward from Jannah. Nearness to Allah azza wa jal. Did that reason exist in that time or did it not exist? Did it exist to the same extent as it exists now or even more? Or did it not? The answer is yes, it did exist. In addition to that, Rasulullah said, I was born on Monday, when he fasted Mondays and Thursdays, right? And he said, I fast Mondays and Thursdays, and of the reasons, not the only reason, of the reasons he gave is that it's a day during which I was born. Every Monday he fasts, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To thank Allah Azza wa Jal for the gift of life. Did he, however, since the reason exists for celebrating, quote unquote, in the way he did, why did he not appoint his birthday of the 12th of Rabi' al Awwal every year on that day to fast? Did he have a reason or did he not? Did Allah know or did he not? In addition to that, it is well established. And Imam al-Suyuti, for example, rahimahullah ta'ala in al-Hawi, kitabu al-Hawi, in his kitab al-Hawi, though al-Imam al-Suyuti says, rahimahullah ta'ala, you may celebrate the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa under certain conditions. And those conditions are so stringent that the way the birthday of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has been practiced, those conditions are not met. Yet, in accordance to other ulama who disagreed with him before him and after him, that he was wrong, rahimahullah ta'ala, even with those conditions. On the basis, basically, of what I just told you, of reasonable uh, reasons in terms of uh, the, uh, the concept of bid'ah and its definitions. He, rahimahullah ta'ala, says himself that the first person who celebrated uh, uh, the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the manner it is celebrated by people after that was six, it was first 600 years after the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He was a king, al-malik al al-mudhaffar of, of, in the area of Palestine at that time, of Sham. He was a good king apparently in the, in the judgment of many ulama, a good king, a, a man of goodness and so on. He is the first person who started this practice ever. It was over 600 years later. Definitely, the best way is the way of Rasulullah Yet one is tempted, of course, because you love Allah, you love Rasulullah you're tempted to do that because our nafs is tempted to do like others do, and to invent things, and to, and, to, and to try new horizons and new things. We like new things. And even you're, you're tempted to be with people who do that, and to sit with people who do that, and you're tempted to do that. But that's your test and mine as a mu'min. If this text about ibtida' didn't exist, then we would be doing that, gladly. But our deen had those texts. Al-Masihiyun, those who claimed to have followed Isa alayhi salam later, did not have those texts. They violated those texts if they existed. That's why the deen became what it became even 100 years later, let alone 300 years later, in the time of Constantine, let alone later and much later. You look at the way the deen is practiced by those who say we are Christians and there is nothing to recognize of the early practice of Isa alayhi salam. Why? Because this door of ibtida' was not closed. And you open it for a small bid'ah and a small bid'ah and the deen becomes unrecognizable centuries later. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم. And there is more.